to a Fit for Good online workout session. Today I'll be taking you through a whole body workout that will be working all your bones and your joints and your cardiovascular system, your CFE or your cardio system that sometimes people call it. So that's your heart and your lungs. That's going to improve all your circulation, help you to burn some calories, should warm you up nice and also help to decrease any aches or pains and just help to loosen up some of your joints. Uh, we're going to be doing some, a mixture of things standing up, a mixture of things sitting down. Uh, first off, we'll start off with a warm-up and a mobilisation. Then I'll take you through circuit one, then we'll have a break again. And I'll take you through circuit two with lots of different exercises, and we'll have a break again. And after that, we'll come back for cool down and a stretch. So just for today, just make sure you've got a nice, big, clear, safe area. No loose rugs or carpets and nothing underneath your feet that you can trip over. Also, if you've got any restrictions above your head, but wash out for any low-lying lights or lampshades or chandeliers. Just make sure you've got some water handy, either in a glass or in a water bottle. Just make sure it's not going to get knocked over anywhere. I've got a nice, comfortable, safe, secure chair there that I'll be using for some of the exercises. And also for today, you don't have to, but if you do just want to make some of the exercises a little more harder, a little bit more intense, you could just hold two cans of baked beans, one in each hand, or two cans of soup, two cans of kidney beans, two little water bottles, or you might be lucky enough to have some weights around the house. So you just want to spend a few minutes just making sure the area is nice and clean, getting everything ready in place. You can pause the video today anytime you need to, and when we come back after a short little break, I'll take you through the warm-up and mobilisation. See you in a while. Welcome back. Now for the next few minutes, it'll just be a warm-up and a mobilisation. Now just remember to work at your own pace. This is caters for all ages and abilities. Take rest periods when you need to, and you can just always pause the video anytime you need to. Uh, you can do everything, uh, copy me, pretty much like for like, sitting down on the chair. So sitting down will be the easy option, but I'm just going to do most of it just standing up. So either sit down or stand up and just copy me. So. Uh, hands just out in front of you and just go have some gentle little back twists. So just loosen up your spine, your lower lumbar region. If you get dizzy, just keep your head facing forwards and just do a little twist just with, with the other body. But if you can take your head round with you, you can sometimes get a little bit further with taking your head round with you. And five, four, three, two, and one. Both feet and knees together and just going for a little bob up and down on the spot. You can hold on to a countertop, so throughout today you can always hold on to a countertop, back part of your chair, a sturdy desk or a kitchen worktop. Try to go for some little circles around one way, even a small motion will help. Small little circles around now the other way. Three, two, and one. Hold on to something just for your balance, but you can do this one second down as well. Lift it up one foot, either a little way or quite a high way, and just rocking your foot up and down a few times straight. And now let's try to do three circles round in one direction, and three circles around in the other direction. Give that leg a little shake out, changing legs, picking it up, about five movements up and down for your ankle joint, straight, and three circles round one way. You might find it harder on one ankle than the other way. And three circles around the other way. And a little shake off to set. Walk on a jog on the spot and just go for some little chest swipes. You can have your hands down lower or hands up higher. Just try to stretch off your chest and your upper back a few times. And three, two, and one. Standing still or walking on the spot and just go for some pet deck. So it's just like you bring your elbows together, gently touch them together, get a stretch going backwards. Three, two, and one. And give some big shoulder circles going forwards. If you can't do arm exercises with your arms above your head, then just go for some breaststroke instead. But if you can do shoulder circles going forwards, it just warms up the whole range of your shoulder joints. Three, two, and one. And shoulder circles backwards. If you can't do, again, 
exercises above your head and you just go for chest presses in that position instead. And three more back or shoulder circles. Three, two, and one. And some little shoulder shrugs going forwards or any motion you can do with your shoulders and your rear neck. Three, two, and one. And shoulders going back as we can. If you can't do that one, then just try and move your shoulders up and down a little bit. But three more going backwards. Three, two, and one. Standing nice and still, and slowly taking your head round to the left. As far as comfortable. Head round to the right. Head back round to the left. Head back round to the right, as far as comfortable. Left ear, tilt to left shoulder. Couple of seconds. Right ear to right shoulder, tilt for a couple of seconds. Left to left again, it's a little bit of a sideways tilt for your head. Three, two, and one. One more tilt, right to right. Three, two, and one. Head back to neutral, slowly dropping your chin down, as far as comfortable. Three, two, and one. Slowly back up, a little breather. Nice deep breaths, and slowly dropping your chin down again. One more time. Three, two, and one. Walk on the spot, or do on the spot, and just go have some bicep curls for a few seconds. So throughout today, try to keep your shoulders back and down, pulling your stomach muscles, so it's working your underlying core muscles, and just try to work on your posture. So every now and again, I'll just remind you for posture reset, and then shoulders back and down, pull the stomach muscles in, and try to have your head uh, go up towards the ceiling, if you sit up nice and tall. And three, two, and one. Hold on to a chair, or wall, or fireplace, or mantle, or sturdy top if you need to, and just go for either slow walking, kicking your heels up towards your lower back, heel flicks. So you do 15 more seconds of slow ones, or you can do 12 more seconds of jog on the spot ones, or you can do 10 more seconds worth of quite fast ones. And five, four, three, two, and one. And one up, little shake out there for your arms and your legs. Hold on to something steady if you need to, or you might just be fine for freestanding. If you're freestanding, march on the spot for a sprinter drill. If you're holding on to something, you can either do a little knee raise to the front, keep that going for 15 more seconds, or you've got 12 more seconds of drill on the spot ones, or you've got 10 more seconds of a good high knee sprint one. And six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, little shake out there. I'm just going to press the egg timer. You can do this one sitting down again. Hold on to something if you need to. But we're just going to be rocking up and down, tiptoes to heels, tiptoes to heels. Or if you can't do the heels, just flat onto tiptoes, flat onto tiptoes. We're just going to do that for 35 seconds. I'll come a little bit closer so you can see my calf muscles. This calf muscle just here working a little bit more. Three, two, one, angle. Now you can just hold on to something. You can go medium pace, or you could. Pause for a second and go back down. So you can just go any speed that feels good for you. It's just getting some blood down to your ankles and your shins and those lower calf muscles, which are endurance muscle. If you can't do onto your heels, just go flat foot onto your toes, flat foot onto your toes. But if you can come up onto your heels, then that's working your lower leg muscles quite well. It's also quite a good awkward one. So 35 seconds and well done. Little shake out, just there. You can do this next one sitting down. You don't have to hold weights, but I'm just gonna demonstrate this holding weights. It's just gonna be going for a side bend with or without weights for 35 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. So again, you can just sit down. Some people might only be able to go a few inches. You might get a pinch in your sides there. Some people might be really flexible. They can, might be able to get their hands up, uh, the high hand, quite close to the ear, and they might be able to get the low hand quite close down to your shin. I can just about get my hands down just the outside part of my knees. So get a nice stretch in your sides. Keep going to the egg timer. I'll try to turn it off as quick as I can. And that's it. And a few seconds breather just there. This next exercise is, uh, you're standing up tall, you're going to have some Punches down to the ground, so you can do either a little punch with or without weights, or you can go for a big punch. The higher you are, the easier it is. The further forward you lean, the harder it is. And again, you can just do this one sitting down. Three, two, one, and go. 
So you just do a little punch, or you can go for a big punch. Further forward you lean, try to get your chin up nice and tall. Still a bit of a warm up stage, but if you're gripping onto something, it's just working your forearm grip and your hand strength. And this one's just warming up your rear shoulders and your upper back muscles and some of your armpit muscles. Also quite a nice stretch out for your lower back. So again, come up higher if you need to, go down lower. Few more seconds, nice deep breaths, and relaxing that. Last part of the warm up, you can just do this one sitting on the chair, either walking or jogging on a spot, and you can do, or you can just do this one standing up. And if you're standing up, I'm just going to give you the option of doing tip, uh, walking with your legs bent and tiptoes, or jogging high ones. So you can do a mixture of low ones or high ones, or just do whatever one you feel more comfortable with. And the hardest option will be the bent down legs ones. Three, two, one, and go. So I'm just going to do five seconds with my legs bent, walking or jogging, and I'm just going to do five seconds up nice and tall. And we'll go back down to the bent leg version. But this is the last part of your warm up, so you can just work at your own pace this one. You could just do the whole walking or jogging upright, you could do the whole walking or jogging sitting down, or you can do the whole walking or jogging with your legs bent. So I'm going to try and move your arms as much as you can. Last part of the warm up. Do a walking version as well. Nice deep breaths, and well done. So always try to take nice deep breaths into your belly button. That's the warm up all done. Hopefully the blood's all pumping around your body. Got a little bit of time now to open any windows or doors you might need to for the extra ventilation. Take off any outer layers if you need to. Don't want to get over too hot. You can always put some more layers back on throughout the cool down. Have some water, have a breather, and I shall see you in a little while. Well done. Welcome back. Now for this next part, which is circuit one, we're going to do 35 seconds of working, and it's going to be about 25 seconds of rest. But you can always increase or decrease those periods once you know the exercises or know how hard they are. So maybe we're going to do them three times through. So round one, round two, round three. So maybe the first time you do them through, you can make it a bit easier, and then second and third time through, just to really finish off the muscles or the cardiovascular system, you can just make them a little bit harder. So I'll give you a, a full demonstration in a little while, but the first exercise will be either a sit to stand or a standing up squat. So the first exercise will be a squat. The second exercise, I'm just going to make it a little bit longer because it's a two in one exercise. It's going to be a bicep curl and a shoulder press. And a bicep curl and a shoulder press. So up here, you can either change your hands or not change your hands, depending on what feels comfortable for you. The third exercise is going to be cardiovascular, so it's going to be either tap and touch above your head, tap and touch above your head, or high jumping one. And the fourth exercise is going to be for your lower back. Uh, I'll show you the standing up version, which is quite hard. It's just going for a deadlift. You try to keep your back nice and straight, going forwards and back. Or I'll just demonstrate you the one on the chair, which I think most people will go for the one on the chair. So the first exercise will be either weights there, weights there, or counterbalance with your arms, or some people like to hold on to a countertop and just go for some good squats up and down, feet nice and flat, keep it nice and steady, or the other option that I know some people like to do is using the chair for support, and sitting down and standing up. So you've got round one of these ones, three, two, one, and squats. So squatting down, standing up, I'll do a few sitting down, and then I'll do the other ones standing up, but you might already know your favourite version of doing them. If you're holding weights, sometimes it's quite good just to hold your weights just in front of your face. You could hold the weights down by your sides or in between your legs. Or I know some people like to lift up the arms, squat into it, lift up the arms, squat into it. Pull your stomach muscles in. Try to stick out both your backside and your chest. And relax in there. Next exercise, I'll take 20 seconds before I start the timer. So it's a two and one exercise. It's going to be sitting down or standing up, bicep curl, shoulder press, bicep curl, shoulder press. If you can't do a shoulder press, do a bicep curl and a chest press or punch. And bicep curl and a chest press and a punch. So you've got to start that one and I'll start this timer officially in 20 seconds. 
and go. So bicep curl, shoulder press. Bicep curl, shoulder press. You might just want to keep your hands there and press that way, or just when you get close to your ears, you can just turn your hands to face forwards. So if you're doing the twisting option, it can also be quite good to work your rotator cuffs. Keep it going. I've just officially pressed the buzzer, just there. And again, you can just do this one sitting down. If you can't do the shoulder press above your head, just like I said before, just do a bicep curl and a chest press punch and a bicep curl and a chest press punch. So any time today, if you can't lift things above your head, then just go for out in front of your chest option. But if you can do the shoulder press above your head, it's quite a good one. So sometimes I just get people to do a bicep curl by itself and sometimes I get them to do a shoulder press by itself. But sometimes, every now and again, it's quite good to combine the two. Just works the muscles a little bit differently. So if there's next one, on the chair, you could toe tap, toe tap, biggest range of motion you can with your shoulders. Or standing up, you can toe tap, toe tap, or jump and jump. Three, two, one, and go. So I'll do a mixture of both the walking ones and the faster, harder jumping ones. But if you know your uh, exercise and your fitness and your ability, you might just be on to these harder ones straight away. And again, you can do five seconds hard, five seconds easy, 10 seconds hard, 10 seconds easy. Uh, a few more seconds, nice deep breaths. Next one is for your lower back, your lumbar region. One exercise for your cardio, one exercise for your lower back, one exercise for your arms and shoulders, and one main exercise for your legs. So the next one is, with or without weights, uh, slightly bent legs will be easier, straighter legs will be harder, but you don't want to round over, you don't want to look down towards the floor, you want to try to keep your chin up nice and tall, you might just be able to get down to there, and back up, or arm straight, some people might be as flexible enough to get down to there, and back up, so that's a standing up deadlift, so a good one for your lower back, so if you've got mirrors around, you could just check in the mirror, that your back stays nice and straight, and you're not rounding over, but for most people, it might just be a little bit easier to keep your back perfectly straight if you did the sitting down version. So chill up nice and tall, go down as far as you can, and you come up, and you go down as far as you can, and you come up, but you keep your chin up nice and tall for that one. So I'm gonna do the first bit of standing, uh, sitting down, and I'll do the next half of it standing up. But you can just do the standing up version if you're confident about keeping your back straight. Three, two, one, and go. So you can go quarter the way down, up to good posture. Half the way down, up to good posture. You can go down to your chest, down to your thighs, up to good posture. Pull the shoulder blades back and down, reset your posture. This is a lower back exercise. It's just like you're lifting something off of the floor. So from the side, the standing up one, back nice and straight. You also feel it in your hamstrings, your rear thigh muscles. So from the front, I'm keeping my eyes up. I'm just feeling it in my lower back. I'm not going too fast. And just meet your face. And one up, and one up. So that's all the four exercises now. So we're just going to go through them two more times. So you can either increase the weights, decrease the weights, or just go for the harder option. So get ready for round two of squats or sit to stands. I'll start off with the sitting down, standing up ones. Three, two, one, and go. So I just pressed it a second after I demonstrated the first easier version. And now I'll be standing. Demonstrating the standing up versions, which is squat and an arm raise, hold onto a banister or a secure uh, mantelpiece worktop, kitchen worktop in front of you, or real sturdy input desk, or the sturdy back part of a chair that doesn't move. If you're just holding the weights just there, you can squat down and hips back through, squat down, hips back through. You can do a squat every four seconds or squat every two seconds. A few seconds breather, sitting down or standing up, bicep curl, shoulder press. If you can't do the bicep curl or shoulder press, go for bicep curl and chest press. I'm just going to start the egg timer 20 seconds after we start this one. Three, two, one, and go. So because it's a two and one exercise, just take it up to about 55 seconds. So you get both 25 seconds of bicep curls and 25 seconds worth of benefit for shoulder press or chest press out in front of you if you get bad shoulders. Keep it going, I'll just press the timer just there. So 
And now you've got 35 seconds here. You can just do this one sitting down as well. Bicep curl, shoulder press above your shoulders. Now, even if you just go halfway above your head with your shoulders, that will still be a beneficial one. It's quite a good one for your stomach muscles, lifting weights above your head. Also quite a good one uh, to strengthen your heart muscle, the cardiac muscle. So lifting weights above your head or hands above your head is not something we do too often. A few more seconds, cardiovascular star jumps come up. So a few seconds breather, you got to sit down, toe tap, toe tap, or you got to standing up, toe tap, toe tap, or jumping ones. Three, two, one, and go. So I'm going to do five seconds of these ones, and five seconds of the moving ones. I'm going to slow it down, catch my breath. Five seconds of the slower, lower intensity. About five seconds of the high intensity. But you can do the whole thing high intensity. You could do 10 seconds, 10 seconds, just in your own head. So you've got 35 seconds to work at your own pace. Hopefully get a little bit out of breath, comfortably a little bit out of puff towards the end of this one. You don't want to be completely tired or fatigued. So working maybe 80 or 90% of your maximum ability will still be beneficial. Well done. Next exercise, lower back. Standing up, deadlift, or the sitting down, getting your chest down to the floor one. Just moving my weights around. This is round two of three. So it's chin up nice and tall, down as far as you can, and back up, or the standing up version. Three, two, one, and go. So quarter the way down, and back. Or half the way down, and back. Or down as far as comfortable. Hip flexors, lower back, back on your posture. Chin up nice and tall, down for a stretch, and back up for your posture. Standing up from the side will be down to sort of a tabletop right angle and back up. Down to there and back up. Beneficial one for your lower back. Medium pace, always going for good quality rather than quantity. Even if you just do two repetitions, that'll still be good. Well done. Ah. Third and final time through before we have a water stop. It's the sit to stands or standing up squats. Third time, I'll do one repetition and I'll start the timer of the sit down, lower intensity version. Three, two, one, and go. Sit to stand, comfortably sit down. Have a little pause, breathe if you need to, and back up. If you're holding weights for squats, maybe just in front of your chin, a few inches in front of your chin just there, or some people like them just there, or some people like them just there, some people like to Kind of balance the arms, which is quite a good one. Also gets the front part of the shoulders a little bit of a workout, doing that one as well. So you can squat down into movement and back up. And you can also just hold onto a worktop out in front of you. So hold onto something and down. Hold onto something and squat as far as comfortable. Well done. A few seconds breather. Next exercise, bicep curl, shoulder press, or bicep curl and chest press. I'm going to do 20 seconds and I'll start the official 35 seconds. Three, two, one, and go. Squeeze the elbows in, bicep curl, shoulder press. And squeeze the elbows in on the way down. So it's just like you try to keep your elbows as close to your body as you can. And you've got the chest press option if you can't lift your arms above your head. And keep it going. So well done, keep working hard. Just for this exercise, two and one. Just making sure we get enough benefit time for both the bicep curl and the shoulder press. So this one's about 55 seconds in duration, but it's two exercises. So your shoulders get, don't get too fatigued back to back, and your biceps, the front part of your arms, don't get too fatigued back to back. The next exercise is a star jump. The sitting down tap, and the hands above the head star jump, or the standing up ones. So you can just do it sitting down. You could be sitting down doing this one as well. Well done. Next exercise is sitting down or standing up, third and final time. Tap and tap, or the jumping ones. Three, two, one, and go. It's the hardest version, these ones. Medium or easy version is how fast or slow you can go to these taps. You can do the whole 35 seconds of the jumping ones, or you can do 10 and 10, or five and five. Keep working hard, well done. Nice deep breaths, dedicated break coming up. This next exercise for your lower back isn't too hard. It's quite a nice stretchy yoga type exercise. Hamstrings, hip flexors, and lower back. And well done. 
So next exercise, last part of the circuit, sit up nice and tall, course away, halfway, or down to right angles and back up. Make sure you feel a nice stretch in your lower back, but not an uncomfortable, painful CG lower back. And I'll do a few sitting down, and I'll do the other one standing up. Then just go quarter way down or halfway down, stretch out your lower back. Three, two, one, and go. You've got a quarter way option, half way option, or all the way option. Sit up nice and tall. It's just like your whole body is a straight, long plank of wood or broomstick. It's trying to keep your chin up nice and tall and go up and down. I'll just demonstrate a few from a standing up position. Feel the stretch and back up to relaxing position. Feel the stretch, back up to a good posture position. A few more seconds. After this, you can pause the video, grab some water, and we'll come back for different exercises in round two. And well done. So pause it, grab some water, and I shall see you in a little while. Well done. Welcome back to circuit two. So this time we'll do three exercises, one for your core muscles, one for your shoulders and your lifting abilities, and one for your cardiovascular. So we're gonna start off with, with all that weights, you can go for a whole side raise, or front raise, or little side raise, or little front raise. Next exercise will be holding the back part of the chair or wall. You go for a little tap behind you, a faster, wider, more bend leg tap behind you, or well, a much harder version, it's a jumpy version. And the third exercise will be sitting down and going for a Russian twist, which is just be working your core muscles. So when we come, uh, come through all them, I'll give you the easy, medium, and hard options, but that's just a little heads up for what's coming up. So we're gonna get ready for round one of three uh, side and front shoulder raises. Sitting down option is easier. Three, two, one, and go. So a slight bend in your legs if you're standing up, one to the side, one to the front. You can just do this one sitting down as well. So you try to stop your arms or your hands just in line with your shoulders to the sides and shoulders to the front. A good lifting style exercise also works your neck muscles and your rear neck muscles. Work at your own pace, as many of those as can with good technique and good quality in 35 seconds. And you've got 25 seconds rest period coming up. And what up? Next exercise is the behind you split step. Little split step, slightly longer one, which can turn into a bit of a lunge, or you've got the jumping tiring version. Three, two, one, and go. So I'm just gonna pretend I'm holding onto the back part of the chair or countertop. So you can go for some little ones there. Got a slightly longer step, just there. Wash out your feet on this one. For some people, you might even want to do, it's a bit like a one-legged squat jump. Your cardio fasciculin from one side to the other side. You could just keep your hands here and just jump like that. Try to put one foot behind the other foot if you can. But again, even if you're just going for a small little motion, it's still an awkward movement that you don't do on a day-to-day -day basis. Quite a good one for your brain as well. And just working those muscles, well done. You can do this one with or without weight. I'll just hold one can of baked beans, just so you can see my hands a little bit easier. Uh, further forward you are on the chair, the harder it is. The more you're sitting on the chair, the easier it is. And the further back you lean, the harder it is. But you don't want your back to hit the back chest. You can rush and twist, eyes facing forwards. You won't get dizzy or head round. You might be able to get a little bit further. But again, if you do get dizzy, just so keep your head facing forwards. 35 seconds, three, two, one angle. So just leaning back, try to feel a little bit of resistance, a little bit of a holding, positioning, muscular hold, position on the stomach muscles. So even just in Pilates, this would just be an exercise in itself, just holding there whilst your stomach muscles are working. But the Russian twist is trying to work your sides, your core muscles, whilst you're in a bit of a, a stress hold position. So the higher you are, the easier it is. The further back you lean, the harder it is. Uh, nice deep breaths, twist as far as you feel comfortable to do so. And relax in there. And now we've got round two of the side and front shoulder raises. Now, a few seconds breathing just there. 
with my Route 66 home. Some, sometimes slides over by itself for some reason. So a few more seconds. Three, two, one, and side and front shoulder raises. So you might just catch me for the first one. I'll come a little bit further forwards. Might actually make me brighter, because I'm a little bit closer to the over ceiling light here. So hopefully you can still see me and I haven't gone completely too bright. I'll drop back a bit. So hands up as high as you can. One to the side, one to the front. Sitting down option is easier. If you did want to make this more cardiovascular actually, and you've got a good technique, you could actually much rather just do this one, either walking on the spot or jogging on the spot. But maybe just walking on the spot would be quite good for that one. So we've still got one more round afterwards, so you can always just make it a lot harder in the third round. Next exercise, little split step, faster split, split step, or the jumping one. Three, two, one, and go. Hold on to something if you're not steady. So if you're not steady, or especially if you've got one side that's a bit more dominant, stronger than the other side, hold on to something and just do a little tap. If you're a bit more confident, a bit more balanced, you can go for a longer stride with a little bit of a rear knee bend. And if you go out for the real hardest version, it's a one-legged jump version. But again, you can do a mixture of both of those ones. So let's keep counting your head of any uh, numbers or time duration you want to do. A few more seconds, you've got the core Russian twist one coming up, and we're next in that one up. I'll just go for one weight again. But you can just do it with no weights. Sitting down, head facing forwards if you had any problems last time, or twist will get you a little bit further around. Three, two, one, and go. So semicircle, semicircle. Rainbow, rainbow. Further back you lean, the harder it is. So head facing forwards, you can still feel the twist. It'll still be working your endurance muscles from that hold. But you're just going for twist and a twist, and back in a twist. Nice deep breaths. Head round to the left, head round to the right. I can feel this one quite good in my sides, just in this position, just here. My back's about one inch away from the backrest. Again, if I come up, if I need a bit of a breather, I'll just come up a little bit higher. And one up. You've got your third and final lot of side and front shoulder raises coming up. Should completely finish off and fatigue your arms at the time, and you've got the walking or jogging on the spot version. Even if you're sitting down, you could still just move your legs on the spot. Three, two, one, angle. Now standing still, one side, one front. One to the side, one to the front. You could march on the spot. You can still do good technique with the upper body for this one, while you're still marching on the spot. And for some people, that uh, might uh, be into their walking or the running or just want to make it real hard for a third and final time you could actually just do it with good uh, jogging on the spot and just make sure you don't drop it into your thighs or your legs I'll set it back down to stand last lot of these ones well done for today keep it going and relaxing there hold on something steady little split behind your step longer split or the jumping one three two one and go and we'll start off with the lowest intensity, easiest version, which is just a little step behind me. Still cardio, now I'm gonna make it a little bit longer and bend my rear leg a bit more, a little bit muscular, and then I'll do go for some of the jumpy version ones. Nice deep breaths. A few more seconds. I'll set back down to the easy one. Chin up nice and tall. Make sure you don't hold your breath. Reset your posture. Shoulder blades back and down. Pull your stomach muscles in. Russian twist coming up, and relaxing there. With all about weights, the uh, more you're on the chair, the easier it is. The more you're sliding forward on the chair, the harder it is. And twisting fast or slow, or medium pace. Three, two, one, there you go. So the third and final thing for the circuit, we have some legs and some cardio and muscular in there with the behind you split steps. We had a little bit of stomach muscles and shoulders and arms, side and front uh, weight or arm raises. And then now we've got some uh, stomach core endurance hold by being in this position and also a twisting functional movement from the rainbow semicircle twist. So after this, grab some water. Well, up, I say all probably now. So after this, uh, pause the video. Grab some water, and when we come back, I'll just take you through a cool down and a stretch. Well done, and I'll see you in a while.
back. That's all the hard work done. So well done, and I hope you enjoyed that fit for good session. Uh, my name's Rob. So it's going to take you through a cool down and a stretch now. So it should just be not too hard. So you're going to do one more exercise for your stomach muscles. So you're going to go for sitting down. Uh, easiest option, hands on your shoulders. Medium option, hands on your head. Hardest option, hands above you. And just at your own pace, join in once you're ready. Hands across the shoulders. Go have some little seated crunches, forwards and back. You might be able to get your elbows just in between your thighs and make it a little bit harder. Join in again once you're ready, but some of you might have gone straight away for the medium option, which was hands on fingertips. So coming back, gently touch your back to the chair and going forwards. Gently touch your back to the chair and going forwards. 10 more seconds to go, but some of you might have gone straight for the hardest version, which is hands above your head. So just try and pull your hands back as far as you can. Three, two, and one, and one up. And this time, just go for a lower back stretch and just hang in forwards and just try to drop your head down to the floor and just for a nice stretch in your lower back. Five, four, three, two, and one. Slow your back up, sitting on the chair and just going for slowly putting one knee as close to your chest as you can. Some people might be quite flexible. You might be able to get your chin quite close to your knee, but don't go anywhere too far past anything that's comfortable. So uh, even just there might just be quite good. Just putting your knee one or two inches closer to your chest than normal for your hip flexor. Three, two, and uh, one. Put that one down, leaning back, come to be onto your secure chair. Pull one knee towards your chest, or some people might be able to get the knee to the chin. Three, and uh, three, two, uh, well, let's go for a big bear hug stretch. So you're going to go for 10 seconds with one arm above and just try to gently squeeze your shoulders together. Three, two, uh, one. Slowly pull your arms back for a good chest stretch. Five, four, three, two, uh, one. And try to alternate arms if you can remember. So last time I did left arm above, this time I'm doing right arm above. For some people, putting the other arm above actually feels quite weird and quite awkward, so you can just go back to your original bear hug. Five, four, three, two, and one. And knuckles out in front and just dropping your head down a bit and just try to sort of curve your back and curve your back, uh, curve your arm back as you're going forwards a little bit. Push your arms out in front of you. Three, two, and one. Uh, interlock your fingers or you can just have your hands apart and just stretch up to the sky as high as you can with good posture. So don't slouch over, try to pull your side muscles in, stretch up to the sky. Three, two, uh, one. Slowly standing back up. Again, hold on to that part of the chair if you want to, a little active stretch through your back. Uh, hold on to the chair or wall and go for a little leg raise behind you, little leg raise or a high leg raise behind you, or a high leg raise behind you, or if you're comfortable for balance, we've just got about 10 more seconds worth of opposite arm, opposite leg raises. So this is nice and slow, slowing down your heart rate, slowing down your circulation, cooling down a little bit, so you might have been quite hot before. And three, two, and one. And sitting down or standing up if you, uh, if you want to, and take one head across. Actually, you've only got one head, so say, so, so, take your head across. <laughs> and then use one hand. You do have an uh, option of hands. So gently pull down on your neck. Three, two, and uh, one. And slowly back across with your one and only head. And take your head across the other way. Feel a nice stretch on your side. Don't have to, but you can just use one hand just to increase that stretch a little bit. Three, two, and uh, one. And slowly leaning forwards just a little bit. And then just straighten your arms up behind you. So the higher you are, the easier it is. The further forward you lean, the more stretch you get in your lower back. But you just try to stretch out the back part of your triceps a little bit. Three, two, and uh, one. Slow back up against the wall or against the back part of the chair. Just going for a calf stretch for your lower leg. So both feet face the same way and just pushing forwards. So well done today. Hope you enjoyed that session. If you go on to www.fitforgood.com, 
you'll get to see all about us and all our little technique sessions and other online videos we put on there. Three, two, and one. Little shake up there. Change the legs. And show you there. Also, if you subscribe to this YouTube channel, the Fit for Good YouTube channel, you'll just be kept up to date with all uh, recent releases that we do. Uh, it does have a comment section on there where you can just always uh, send us some feedback or any comments. Any positives or negatives will be great to hear. Three, two, and one. Little shake out there. You can even do this one, slightly bent legs or legs fully straight. Just going for one final stretch for your hamstrings, back part of your legs. If you get head rush or get dizzy, just keep your head up nice and high. Decrease the angle by sticking out your backside. You can still feel it in your hamstrings there by having your chin up high and pushing your backside backwards. But if you don't have any problems uh, breathing wise or circulation wise, you can always just drop down, pull gently on the back part of your legs. Or just some people might be a lot more flexible than what you can see here. Might be able to touch your toes. Three, two, and one. Slowly back up with some good deep breaths. Shake out your arms. Shake out your legs. Well done. Hope you enjoyed that. Drink some water. Have a rest period if you need to. If you get stiff or tired over the next few days, try and remember some of those stretches. Or just try and do a little bit of walking around your house or your garden or your local roads. But try to keep yourself moving and have a good healthy diet. And we shall see you soon again. Thank you and goodbye.